The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, we have the uh, Dow Industrials up 121, NASDAQ up 37, S&P's up 19, gold contract down $3.30, trading at 1298 an ounce. You get silver up $0.03, cents, $14.81 an ounce, light sweet crude. Up 45 cents, 61 dollars, 49 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds flat. 10-year note 124.13. 30-year bond 149.13. They both went higher with volume yesterday, folks. We're at a 2.4 in the 10-year. King dollar. King dollar up 155 ticks, trading 97 to 75. The euro is at 112 to one U.S. dollar. The yen is at 109 and a half, and the pound is at 129 to one U.S. dollar. You know, if this was a normal day. Up 20 in the S&P would look pretty good. It sure would. It sure looks pretty good to some, too. But uh, in context, quite a move down yesterday. Yeah. We'll see what happens today. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Heeks at TD Ameritrade. Think or swim as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you want to understand options, option strategies, futures. And let me tell you something. You want to find risk in this market. Great program. Every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you happen to be... Driving down the West Coast right now, always remember, you can go right to YouTube, just put TFNN in, you're going to get all the programming, great programming, uh, great charts each and every day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Here we go. The roller coaster is on an upswing here, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, I'm, frankly, I'm a little surprised by this rally myself because even though some of the data that, that we got was pretty good, um, you know, normally when you see... In the retail world and in the trading world, what you see after a big percentage down like we had yesterday is margin calls. So that next opening is usually a little soft, and that's when you use the opportunity to buy. Look, we didn't even get a chance today. You know, they, they, they were higher early and often. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting because, you know, what, what does happen, there's no doubt that those calls can go out overnight. Uh, right. And they got to be done most of the time by 11 or 2, right? Depending on what kind of account it is, right? Yeah. Right, and you can almost time it. Yeah. Right? You can almost see the pressure uh, go on the market and then subside, and then you know you, that you know that as a trader, you know you got to get through that little time, and then and then the the real market will 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 you know show its its start, attitude for the day. Start kicking in. You know these notes and bonds, Kevin. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, we can go back. You know, we've, we've talked a million times over the last, you know, years, but it's amazing, man. That's the Ever Ready Bunny, man. I mean, you know, like you, you can you can look at a million different ways, but they, they, those, the buying and that just doesn't stop. Yeah, think about it, Tom. We sell off and the bonds rally a point or more than a point, and we rally back and they're down two ticks. Yes. 30, year, 30 bonds down two ticks. Right, right. So, Great you point. know. They are just a great haven right now where you can lock in 2.4%. Yeah. So, you know, pe people feel comfortable there. And, you know, you know I think with, with where the Fed stance is right now and everything that you have going on in the world, you know, 24 in the 10-year lo looks pretty attractive, especially to European and foreign investors. Yeah, there's no doubt, man, no doubt. And so, so uh, there's no doubt uh, the market took a, a little bite out of Apple yesterday, huh? Yeah, I mean, their exposure to China and, and just the overall uncertainty. Think about it. If you, we, we talked about this yesterday on Fast Market. When you look at a stock like Apple, right, they're in the Dow, they're in the NASDAQ, they're in the S&P 500, they're in the S&P 100. Yes. So when you talk about any of those futures and the corresponding index is selling off, Apple's going to be affected by all of them. Sure. So right. you already have a big down day. Then you have a big down day where the news affects Apple, right, directly. Right. So 
Will it be down there for long? Who knows? But certainly yesterday, that was a pretty substantial move in Apple. But, I mean, when you break it down, something like that, Apple will probably have a little higher beta than, than, than the rest of the market because it's in, it's in all of them, Well, frankly. and you just brought up a great point. You know, I remember in the, fir the first downdraft in 2000, people couldn't figure out why it went so quick. And what it was is that ETFs, folks, had just started. And so what ends up happening is that, you know, are you selling the ETF? Are you selling the stock inside the ETF? And so it's the chicken or the hen. You know what I'm right. saying? That once you get an acceleration, whether it's up or down, the ETF structures themselves, that's not for selling. Uh, what ends up happening, if someone sells the Qs, they're going to sell Apple. If they sell Apple, they're going to sell the Qs. Right. You know, so there's, there's a very fast acceleration. And now, you know, as you, as you just brought up all those different sectors that they're actually in, it's like, oh, my God. Okay, right. so <coughs> you can see that selling right along all those indices. Um, and it's just something that everyone should be cognizant of, right? right? It, it doesn't mean that, a that Apple should be overly bullish or bearish. It just means that you should be cognizant of when this market's making a big move and you're seeing futures, you know, kind of lead the market down, that Apple's going to be affected. And, and, like, why is Apple down? Even if it has good news, any market down 600 or 2.5%, 2.4%, Apple's going to be heavy. There's just no way to get around it. Sure. You know, when, we, when we're looking at the option market, when, when you're dealing with a market that's this volatile, what are some of the better strategies that you're looking at? Right. Well, the, 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 the fact that the, the one thing we talked about on yesterday's show was, remember how we, we, you and I have talked on this show about the rule of 16. Yes. And, and one, you know, think about how big the market moved yesterday, and VIX was a 20. Right. That wasn't lining up. Okay. Frankly, if it should have been higher, if that market was really significantly and if there was conviction on the downside, protection should have been more expensive <coughs> to buy, and it wasn't. Now here we are, up, you know, a fraction of what we lost yesterday, and the VIX is below 19. Yeah. It's down two points. So I actually thought that, you know, when we were on the air yesterday. In fast market, VIX was only 20.4, 20, 20. 20. 20 and a half. Okay. And I was like, wow, it should be higher yeah. with, with, with the market where it is. So volatility, at least in terms of the SPX contract and the VIX, was kind of muted for, for everything that, that was going on. Because, you know, percentage-wise, it was a pretty big move. Isn't that cool? So, yeah. 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 So that's the way the way we were looking at that. Like, wow, if you know, if one and a half uh, percent move in the SPX should be a twenty four vol, right? Yeah. A two and a half percent move in one day, at least we should be north of significantly north of twenty. But if it's a one day event, maybe the overall market discounted this as a one day event. No, and the fact so that we're cool. up today kind of confirms it. No, I know. Just the, really getting to understand that, you know, and I'm sure people have other tools or whatever, but that is really cool, man, because that that's basically saying that, hey, listen, you, you might get a little bounce going, which something was out of line, right? Yeah, in fact, which is what happened. Now, and today we could turn around and say, okay, well, you got to be careful, right? Because the the bottom line is that this is not getting crushed as, uh, well, as an option where trader. We are, would say. Guys, we're about a week and a half, two weeks from Memorial Day, and that's summer trading. So you got to understand the, the 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 pressures on VIX. The pressures on VIX, that's right? I like it. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great day, safe day. We look forward to the program. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. up 68 S&Ps are up uh, 29 um, and the vols out here huh we get uh, the the S&Ps let's go take a look at the S&P so the S&P has just jumped over the last high of this morning let's see if this baby uh, well it's a pretty good jump too let's see so your first high was up here at uh, what's that seven o'clock this morning your next high was up at uh, 940 and we just jumped that so uh, 2832. So you got, there we go, right there. What is that number? That's 20. 2836, the high or the low? Okay, the high. The high, 2836 on the dot. Okay, so this is where we're going to go with 283550. Uh, that high there, that's where we got the uh, pop on the uh, open yesterday morning. Yes. And so that's, that's, a, that's a big number, one, 122,000 contracts. And we'll see if uh, what it can do. The uh, there's, there's no doubt when you when you take a look at this chart though it's like it you know when, when the volatility gets this high it always cracks me up that you know you can be up 28 points but it like doesn't look like anything and yeah you know 28 points is a lot of points man yeah I mean it's, it's it's lower highs and lower lows right yeah. so you know you go down a lot you go up a little I mean in terms of you know you can see that trend right. for sure so it'd be interesting to see where we go from here because we keep going up, you might break that trend. But yes. Yeah, we're right. still there for sure. But right now, you got it there, no doubt. Now, if we go overseas, folks, what you're going to see overseas is this. Um, you know, Asia last night was down slightly, you know, not, not a huge amount. We had uh, the Shanghai was down six, seven tenths of one percent. Um, you had the Nikkei, uh, now the Nikkei must have opened back up. Let's see, that was down six tenths of one percent. Remember, that was close for a long time. Let me just see. Yeah, that. it's been open for a while, though, at least a week or something. Where we're, yeah. So, yeah, see, so it was open for a week. Oh, yeah. oh, well, no, that's the 10th, isn't that the 10th? And then that's the what? 
Oh, that's over the weekend. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 So that rejected lower price last night. Let me just look at this. Okay. So when it's a swing, eight hundred million, one billion. Okay. So that was. Last night it had light. Well, I don't have the volume yet. I see what's going on. Okay, but the Nikkei went into those lower swings from uh, February and March and had volume. So those those babies looks like it's going to be back down. Now, if we go to Europe, what you're going to see it looks to me like Europe is setting up an ABC structure on the way down. If we take a look at the DAX, you're going to see DAX got up to 11,959 today. Now you're at 931, which is not bad, but you can see there's not much movement here. And uh, that's going to be something that you can keep an eye on as UKX, as the FTSE. It's amazing to me we don't talk about Brexit anymore. <laughs> I'm sure we will at some yeah. point when something happens. The, uh, remember, every day that's what we were talking about. Well, they had, to, they had the deadlines. So right. Yeah. All right. And then they pushed back the deadlines. We got a little right. reprieve. So in the FTSE... Uh, this is, I, well, I don't have the volume. We'll find out what the volume comes in today. But this came, when I came down yesterday, that had juice also. So um, we still, it, it was, let's see, let's go look at the silver market because we had gold move yesterday, silver didn't move. Well, S I N. You're up two pennies, no big deal. Yeah, silver, silver, silver still needs a, a bid out here. Um, you know, we'll see where this is uh, baby shaking out. You got the, uh, the dollar index up 170 ticks. That's not enough uh, for any real action. Oh, uh, Uber. Yeah, we'll pull it up. Yeah. I, uh, oh, the, listen, this I is... I think it snuck back into negative territory. Up, it's back in positive territory. Oh, this is going to be a scandal. This is, this is, uh, uh... Okay. You know... I don't know. Why don't you elaborate then? Oh, because what ends up happening is that the... So the, the way that... You know, when you get lead underwriters, I mean, the bottom line is that they're supposed to be able to, the, the reason you get a lead underwriter is that you know what the true supply demand is, as close as you can sure. get. And then, if, if I'm pitching you and you're Uber, and I'm Morgan Stanley and Goldman, I'm pitching you that I'm going to hold that price. I'm going to make sure that that... You're going to do your best to hold that price. That's, that's right. To, but, to say, and, I'm, and I'm going to gonna put that stock in the right people's hands right. so they'll hold it. Sure. Well, none of that happened. Uh, I, okay, so that's total speculation? Or? No, no. Then, that's then, that's then. where those sales, uh, this is what's going on. So w what's happening here is that the, the shares of even some of the bigger players that they put their, share, their hands sure. into flip the, flip the stock. But they can't, okay, but they can't guarantee all that. That's what you can't. I, they, I, I understand you can't guarantee well, it. I'm just trying to represent, you said that they, they, they have to do, you know, it's like they do their best to find investors that say they're going to hold it. They do their best to peg the value. Um, Uber, still at this valuation, is tens of billions of dollars company. They have big finance people. I mean, I've been listening to commentary as well in terms of you go in as a know-nothing company. Some companies say, I'm going to trust you guys because I don't know what this market is at all. Right. A company like Uber has people just as smart, probably, almost as the people at Morgan Stanley in the finance world, just because you're worth that many billions. Um, and they may have had a hand in saying, listen, we were almost going to go at 120 billion. We're not pegging below 75 billion, okay? And we're going to let the market tell us if you actually think it is. I could see that playing out. And they could do their best. So just when you say there's going to be a scandal, I haven't heard anything that, 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 that factually says there's a scandal. Um, I'm just... Yeah, no, I, well... I just, it's, it's a strong we'll, word, you know, is to say people go talk and say, oh, yeah, it's a huge scandal. They tell their friends that, oh, it's a huge Morgan Stanley. They're going to be under investigation or... Well, they're going to get sued. They're all going to get sued. I, I suspect you're going to see that within a week and a half. So what happens... It's all just speculation, let, let's, and even let's, that's... Let's, a, pitch, let's pitch it that you're a... I'm Morgan Stanley now, and you're a big fund, right? What, what, what's happening is that when I give you those shares... They, yes, yes, saying you're going to hold these shares, right? right? But it's not, okay. But we just went over it's not legally binding. So how are you going to sue the people on that? I, I, I understand. That's a relationship business to say, I believe in this company, I'm going to, so they allocate shares to the investors they feel. That's right. And they but move But there's them nothing all to up. do with the legality of, of having to hold that shares. It, but it has to do with the aspect of them knowing their customers and pushing it out. You're speculating that it was an intentional 
no, I'm fraudulent. Not. No, I'm not. You no, are because no. otherwise we don't know. So that's you speculating. That's I'm, the definition of speculation. I'm just. It is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go look at Lyft. L Y F T. They're going south too. So you get Lyft. Lyft got a lift out here today. Two thirty-five. You're at fifty bucks. And it's an ABC down to 41, so we'll see how this shakes out. We've got to 47, uh, 17 and thus far, and we'll see how this baby goes. The, uh, some of the higher volume equities out here, and I suspect what you're going to get out here is um, lighter volume out here today. So you get uh, Uber's one of the top ones out there, volume-wise. It's up uh, 55. You get Marbell up 78. We get Di Disney, I guess Disney uh, end up doing, they get full control of... Uh, they got all the Hulu. Well, yeah, uh, all the control of it, at yeah, least, right? Yeah. So let's see what they... Disney will take full operation control of Hulu in a deal with Comcast that will value the streaming service at more than $27 billion. It's pretty amazing, man. They started this thing from nothing. The yeah. valuation represents a bet on continued rapid growth. Uh, let's see, just a month ago, Hulu was valued at $15 billion. Is that really... <laughs> Wow. The number 27 billion is that by 2024, though, so it's oh, in five okay, years okay. that they get for their stake, um, or or the value of the appraisal could it be even more. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy, I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9:30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Wow, 
Welcome back, folks. Uh, the king, Amazon, out here. Uh, this is going to so Amazon's going to give employees ten thousand uh, bucks in three months' pay to set up their own delivery firm to help fulfill its one-day shipping promise. The roads are just going to be Amazon vans, pretty soon. And they are Mercedes vans. Now that you yeah, checked it out, yeah, I thought so. That's did, why they I did, did a stylist. They did. Um, so this is part of. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. I said, didn't they already do that? So this is just for employees. They're offering the employees ten thousand dollars in the equivalent of three months to start their own delivery business, as part of its existing delivery service partner program. Um, since launching, launching in June of eighteen, two hundred small businesses have launched to deliver Amazon packages. Um, Growing network, and so yeah, they're really cutting the middleman out, man. So they offer the current employees ten grand, an equivalent of three months of their gross salary. Yeah. Set up that business, and um, and they're helping them with uh, getting the vans. The, the, okay. The, you know that, and, and what, what's intriguing here is that the um, the acceleration. This is for the one day deal. The excel, the acceleration is going to be big. But one of the articles I read in Bloomberg also had said that Amazon is stating that they can make from seventy-five thousand to three hundred thousand. Okay. You make three hundred thousand running around a van, man. That's pretty intense. That's you a know? that's a great salary for it's, sure. No, it's yeah. totally, man. And yeah. there's your. Let's see. Let's see what. Let's see what this one. Oh, there it is, right there. That's that's it. Yeah. And where is this from? So this is from May 4th of 19. I was just pulling it because this doesn't speak to the one we just did. This is the general one, basically okay. that they're hiring. Come on, scroll down for me. Where are we? Too many ads loading. Um, yeah, to start them with annual profits up to 300000 Now, I wonder what, this is a marketing piece by Amazon as well, up to 300000 yeah. I wonder what percentage of people really are, are, are earning over two hundred, three hundred thousand. Oh, okay, hold it. And annual profits operate a fleet of up to forty vehicles. <laughs> oh my God! I wonder if the three hundred thousand is that you got to need forty vehicles. In I the imagine it's so. <laughs> that's why I, you know that's a number that's. That's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would make more sense, right? Yeah. Because then, then you, because Amazon's margins are small, so tiny. It's like you know. You gotta be delivering a lot of packages. You gotta right? be delivering. Oh, there it is. Amazon branded Mercedes Benz Sprints. Uh, yeah, Sprinter Vans. Vans. Yeah. Um, the program's office package of incentives such as discounts on the van, branded uniforms, fuel program, comprehensive insurance, coverage, and more. Yeah. The job involves managing a team of 40 to 100, employee, uh, 100 employees and a fleet of up to 40 vans. Okay, so 40 vans. And there you go. Revenues of a million to 4.5 million. So you got to pull in 4.5 million in revenue to get to that 300,000. <laughs> wow. That's, um, that's a tight profit, man. That's quite an operation managing 40 delivery vehicles. Seriously. Um, Logistically, I'm sure, but you know, maybe if you have Amazon helping you, logistically they're the oh, king. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now jumping from them, right? Walmart. Did you see their news as well today? So they are jumping in the delivery game as well. One day shipping on oh, many items. This. Yeah. And so they have I so thought, many stores. They should be able to do I that. I thought this is where you were going to go, actually, when you brought up Amazon, just because this could be a big deal. So they're rolling out next day delivery service to counter Amazon's recent move yeah. for their one-day shipping. So starting today, Walmart customers in Phoenix and Las Vegas who buy at least 35 bucks worth of goods will get a free one-day shipping. Um, the offer, which Walmart hinted was in the works, will be applied to as many as 220,000 items wow. and extend to South California in the coming days and reach out to about three-quarters of the U.S. by the end of the year. That's a big one. Um, unlike Amazon, which will spend $800 million, to uh, this quarter to reduce delivery times, Walmart said a shift will actually cost the company less. This is the interesting one, since the items typically will come in just one box from a single warehouse that's closest to the customer. Keeping a tight lid on expenses is paramount. So it's less because you don't got to go to the store and then go to the customer, right? Yeah. Which is the Walmart model, basically. Or, um, so it's actually going to save. Yeah, yep, the, go ahead. Okay, the, yep. the operations forecast to lose more this year than it did in 2018. I just, okay. Yep, okay. Sure. So this is going to be really intriguing how we end up shopping, or, uh, you know, just in general, right? And I think that spoke to just the domestic e-commerce business. That's what they're talking about. It's yeah. just going to lose a little bit more than it did last year. They're probably trying to spend money or, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, you have to, right. Yeah, because thankfully they have plenty of profits in their brick-and-mortar stores to right. support some losses in the domestic right. e-commerce. Um, so anytime someone shops next day, it's guaranteed to cost us a lot less. That's Walmart's e-commerce chief. Um, we're not paying the carriers anymore. That's in contrast to online orders that come in multiple boxes from multiple locations, which can be quite costly. So they're streamlining that, that operation as well. Um, and let's see how uh, they're trading. Yeah, so pretty, pretty muted 
in, in fairness, because uh, I think that's a big deal. That's just a consumer, fundamentally. That's what you have to have to be able to compete. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. What's going to be intriguing here is to see what happens. You know, I guess Walmart is... There are a lot of them around here as standalone stores. But imagine you have, you have a inside a mall and you're next to a Walmart. Is that going to slow down, you know, the traffic inside the, the mall? You know, you mean with uh, just oh, for, people for, not going to Walmart? Yeah, for, uh, no, you. not going to Walmart for other stores. Right, right. You I'm know, with Walmart's you. Walmart's traffic. Do, yeah, sure, sure. Right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like you always like to be next to big stores if you're yes. a smaller business, and yes. uh, that's that's. <laughs> Everything yeah, is... I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yep, totally. Wild. Yep. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume... At, well, actually, let's... Yeah, let's go look at the higher volume equities first. We almost, we, we almost made it down that list. Okay, so you get GE. That's still trading 10 bucks. That's up 15 cents. Facebook is uh, down 96. You got uh, Roku. That's, that's, that's one that's hanging tough in a big way, man. Definitely. You know, that was even up when the market was down, right? That's, let me just look at this first, because I think this was like one of the only equities that really didn't get hit. Yeah, right. So it went down yesterday. It went from 84 to 78. That's it. Yeah. And I guess, you know, when you look at what Hulu is getting valued at, you can see, well, let me see what that, the market cap is of that. No, so they're much different companies, though. Hulu, Hulu is a content okay. company. Okay. Yeah. That's so valued at nine billion. I mean, Hulu's a Netflix, so whereas Roku isn't a box like an Apple TV style. You got Disney's up, Coke's up, Facebook. Let's see where Facebook is running. So it's down slightly. This Facebook looks like it's making its way down to this uh, 171. And then if it does that, that gap is wide open at 150. Now the the what's, what was the, the WhatsApp news? Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. I just when I went to China, that's the first time I I downloaded that app. Okay. Yeah, and so, that's of course the Facebook owned property. Oh, is it? That's, oh, you yes. told me that. That's yeah. right. Um, so they always talk about end-to-end -end encryption, um, and this just an article talking about how that's really not the case at all. The discovery that hackers could snoop in WhatsApp should alert users of supposedly secure messaging apps to an uncomfortable truth. End-to-end -end encryption sounds nice, but if anyone can get into your phone's operating system, they'll be able to read your messages without having to decrypt them. Um, so it was a Financial Times article Tuesday, so a little bit ahead of us yeah. on Tuesday, of course, the spyware that exploited the vulnerability, vulnerability was Pegasus, made by an Israeli company, NSO, and it could access the phone's camera, microphone, open messages, capture what appears on the user's screen, and log keystrokes, rendering encryption pointless. Um, and it all works on operating systems, including iOS, Android, and Microsoft's rarely used mobile version of Windows. Um, so they say that, yeah, the cybersecurity community has known about it for years, and activists have been talking about it um, because it can be used against, you know, political dissidents, journalists. Yeah. Um, they say that they don't sell it to unsavory regimes and it's disabled in the U.S., um, but, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty eerie. Um, yeah, but the according, yeah. So nonetheless, be aware. So, so Pegasus, I see. So that's the that's the software so you need to, is, to knock. We'll finish this because. Stay right there, Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Nasdaq's up 81, S&P's are up 31, and, uh, you know, we were talking with uh, Paul, our man Paul from uh, Henderson, yesterday about cryptos, and uh, these things are on fire, man. Sure is, over 8,000, 8,041, not bad. 12 days. Let's see what so, happens. So look at this, folks, this is like crazy. 12 days, we went from 4883 to 8,000 right now, 8,300. Wild, seriously. Isn't it? it and is. now, watch this. You know, first Fidelity was getting into the mix. And now, um, we'll look, I'm looking for the, one, the, the FDIC uh, insurance. Yeah, I don't see it up there. So, what you're going to have uh, inside crypto, folks, this is pretty cool, is that you're going to actually be able to get FDIC insurance if you buy, buy this off, let's see. If you see it, let me know. Right? Yeah. There's, there's, a bank we'll that, to... there's a bank that's getting involved in it. And that would be just amazing because that means that you, you can't lose. Well, you can't lose for 250 grand. That's how that works. FDIC insurance is 250 grand. Um, it's the cash part of their account, right? That's it. Uh, I... That would be... Let's say let's say that if you're in the bank and I have crypto and it's 250 grand, right? I read the article. We should pull it up. I'd say because the one thing I was alarmed by is it said they qualified for the cash aspect of the account. So it's only oh, only the cash yeah, aspect. Oh, yeah. not the crypto. No, that's that's. We'll we'll get the article. Oh, up. interesting. Um, because Sounds it made a distinct point to make that point. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a problem. Yeah. Because. Um, okay. So that means. Yeah. I, I see. Okay. So it doesn't mean still someone steals the crypto and because that's the big deal, man. I mean, you know, Fidelity is getting really aggressive um, in all the markets because uh, there's another story out here this morning that Fidelity uh, in the next three or four weeks uh, is not doing business anymore with Goldman Sachs on. Right now, they have a, Goldman Sachs has a contract with Fidelity that all the shot selling when they're lending shares, Goldman does it. Goldman's the middleman. I middle saw man. that, yeah. And so what's going to happen is that Fidelity is going to be their That's own, the be their own idea, deal. Yeah. yeah. So Fidelity's cutting out the middleman, Goldman Sachs, when dealing with Wall Street shot sellers. The money manager is bringing its stock lending business in house, according to a March 29th regulatory filing, instead of paying Goldman Sachs. To run it according to filings, the bank received, listen to this number, the bank received 10% of its revenues generated by Fidelity lending 
primarily from firms that borrow stocks. To, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. So is that saying that, that Goldman received 10% of its revenue from Fidelity? I believe so. So let's look at Goldman. This is lots of sense, man. 10% of its revenue. I knew there was money in London stock, but I never knew it was that much money. So Goldman takes in yeah. 3.5 billion. So they're saying 350 million. 3.5 billion or what? Uh, uh, oh, no, 35 billion. Yeah. So 3.5 billion would right. be a uh, year. A year. That's pretty intense. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, they're, they're dealing with $2.7 trillion worth of yeah. assets. Right. And right. so $3 billion on $3 trillion. Right. Yeah, it's staggering numbers across the board. No, right? they are. You know, they um, are. So jumping back, we didn't get a chance to finish. What article were we on here? For um, Facebook, for the yeah. WhatsApp, right? Yes. We were talking about this um, hacking program, Pegasus. So where, uh, we scrolled around a little bit, didn't we? I had the point. The, it can, uh, we lost where. Okay, you can just call the phone. Unfortunately, we scrolled around. Um, do you see where we were? Yeah, look at it. Okay, so what, what's happened with this Pegasus previous Okay, it was previously assumed that for Pegasus to work, the intended victim had to click on the... Yeah, uh, a phishing link, like we're all familiar with. the malware. But according to a brief technical description of the hack posted on WhatsApp on Facebook, it now appears that hackers can install the malware simply by calling the target. Yeah, pretty remarkable. You know, this isn't the first vulnerability of this kind to be discovered uh, in a supposedly secure message to NAP last year, Argentina security... Uh, uh, wrote about a flaw in Signal, an app favored by Edward Snowden. In that case, a hacker could send a specifically crafted internet mess signal address, uh, internet address t in a signal message, and it would download the malware. It's important to realize, however, that spyware that can install itself without any action, without any action on the user's part, can arrive through any channel, be it encrypted message, a browser, an email, or SMS client with an undiscovered vulnerability allowing such yeah. a tech. So, SMS being texts. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, yeah, it's really interesting. And what it doesn't say here, and that's what we're trying to figure out. So, if you get a text, you have to text it back. <laughs> yeah, you have to do anything, right? You have to do anything. And you may not. Right. right. Yeah. You know, uh, these are merely applications running on top of the operating system and once a piece of malware gets into the ladder, it can control the device in a multiple of ways. My God, this, this Yeah, so it has a key logger. It can see one side of the conversation, add the ability to capture a user's screen. They can see the full discussion, regardless of what security precautions are built into the app you're using. These so you're kind of in there ahead of the safety of the app because yeah. it's got control or can see everything in the operating system. So you see these end-to-end -end encryption, you think, oh, that's great. Well... It's not. Not so much, right? The ama it, 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 imagine these hackers, folks, are just folks that actually understand that much about it, just must like be like, this is just an open book, man. And so this is where it gets interesting. And I'm not familiar with this Israeli firm. Um, so the WhatsApp episode is likely to increase the backlash against NSO and the export license it has from the Israeli government to sell Pegasus, which right. is what we're talking about here. Right. Um, so if they stop developing the malware, others will take its place, of course. There's always going to be another one, but pretty remarkable that like, they're publicly, it's known that they sell this software. Right. Um, and they just say, don't worry, we say we don't sell it to anybody that shouldn't have it. Well, that, that's, that's a tough one to police, even if you're trying your hardest, let that's alone. That's right. Yeah. And because what has happened in, in the past is that the, when they had the uh, Arab uprising and all those, these, these governments had oh, Pegasus. Oh, definitely, right. That's, yeah. you know, that's yep, how they're checking course. on the right. whole ball of wax. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. It's a brave new world, and it's all about gathering information and feeding it into that big computer. Yeah. And One see, big computer running it all. And see what spits out. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the euro and see if this thing is getting its head up. No, it's still not getting its head up, man. You know, I mean, we've been down at these levels for quite some time. You know, it's over the uh, 111.77, but just barely. We hit uh, 112.04 today. You know, as you can see, this, is, this hasn't broken its downturn yet. Yeah. The... Uh, Go to the pound. 
So the pound's at 129.18. That hasn't either. Yeah. That's, uh, that looks like it still wants to go to 128.66. Down, down industrials right now uh, trading up 190. NASDAQ is up 70. S&Ps are up 27. We look percentage-wise out here, folks. What do you have? You have the Dow industrials up 7 tenths. Uh, NASDAQ up 9 tenths. S&Ps up 8 tenths. Tell me that can work better. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up about 182. Nasdaq's up 68. S&P's up 27. And if we go into the Dow, uh, take a look at the uh, strength versus the weakness out here. Point-wise, you got uh, Boeing putting 34 points in, uh, Visa putting 21, Disney 14, taken away from it, United Health 10. And if we go to Boeing for a second, you know, there, was a, there was a pushback yesterday with uh, American Airline pilots. Um, on the uh, type of training that Boeing is putting out right now on the 737 MAX. Okay. Um, uh, here we go. There we go. Pilot pushback on MAX training plan. We need more. Yeah. So there was a draft version of Boeing's proposed training update for its grounded 737 MAX. Um, inadequate, according to American Airlines Group pilots who saw the plan 
both the content and production quality of the core computer-based training needs more work, an American captain and spokesman for the Allied Pilots Association said yesterday. Some optional supplemental instructions and videos were better, he said. Um, man, Pretty they better intense. get on top of that's it. A, yeah. that's, that's an intense statement, it man. It is. How about, how, about, how about you do better than necessary instead of hoping that you get there, right? Oh, In terms of... I, I was really surprised when I read there that. There should be no questions at no, all. No, totally, man. Um, and so they say they're developing a course to accompany a software update for a system known as MCAS, which has been implicated in two crashes, um, killed 346 people. And, you know, when you're looking at a trust issue, I'd, you know, if I'm going to take a word, I'd take this guy's word that's a pilot. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's here's, like, yeah. you know. And I always talk about it, biases, conflicts of interest, right? Boeing has a conflict of interest. Yep. They have to spend more to right. do that, right. okay? This pilot, his only conflict of interest is making sure that nobody dies. Right. So right. if if and he's biased in that degree, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I want that bias to win out. Exactly. Yeah. No, you know, no, totally. exactly. Totally. Um, so uh, there were areas of the core MCAS computer lesson that we nodded our head in affirmation, but there are others where we shook our heads. That's not going to do. Oof. We need more. I'm and Boeing keeps going. Stay right there, folks. We got a fast market coming up next. I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, the Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wham! Go get him, folks.